There we go. Looks like something's coming up. There we go. Hey, what's up, Donald? I, uh, I just downloaded the application, so uh, good to see you, man. Nice to see you. Yeah, I've been looking at a lot more of your content. I, you've got some real cool characters on the Hex platform, man. It's like you got like some really funny characters. And I and I and I say this, I mean, I say it lovingly, but there's some people course, that are yeah. really high level nerds, man. They just like they deep yeah. dive on all of this stuff. And like I was like I was listening to you explain um, uh, staking ladders. So uh -huh. that was really cool. That was really good informative information for me to see staking ladders. That's awesome, man. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on. So actually one of, uh, I, I know I've listened to your stream, uh, you know, a couple of times since I just found you. And uh, yeah. one of the people in the Hex community, the Hexicans, like I think his name is like Black Square or something, but he, uh, he shares like a whole bunch of people's content. And, uh, and yours was, is, was one of them the other day. So I uh, clicked on the link and I said, oh, nice. You know, this guy, uh, you know, he's been in Hex for six months and things like this. So, uh, yeah, glad to. I downloaded the application the other day and then I haven't used it since. So it was cool to to join your stream. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, it's it's nice to just test out the waters and try it out and see what the functionality is. Um, one of the things I do, I've said about this platform is that I do like the dashboard. It's very functional. It's really nice. It's easy to share a screen because like I have my laptop and then I have an HDMI cable plugged into my monitor. So I have two screens essentially that I can share different stuff on. And then I'm using OBS as, as opposed to just the, just the uh, platform I'm using OBS as well so it, it's really really flexible and nice to use so yeah, what what, I mean, city, what what city was it that you're living in you're living in the so, okay so two cities so I live with my further brothers and my dad and the two little wiener dogs at a, at a house that we're renting in Bellevue Washington and then okay. uh, and then my girlfriend lives in Seattle so I oh, okay right cool. now in Seattle uh, downtown and actually looking out uh, kind of towards the Space Needle. Uh, the Space Needle is just, right now these windows that I'm facing are just uh, the, the lake next to, maybe it's like Washington or something next to the Space Needle, but then yeah, the Space Needle's in the other room. Uh, so so yeah, man, I was uh, happy to kind of join your stream because I didn't really plan on streaming today since <laughs> this is kind of like my first time at a friend's house, but it's uh, it's cool to at least join yours, uh, you know, for a few Keep and kind of just catch up with the hex again, man. Yeah, get get some uh, get some exposure anywhere and everywhere you can. Yeah. So how did you get? How, because I can tell you, when I was going on to YouTube, I was basically going down through. I think it was um, what is the guy who's uh, Crypto Daily? Crypto Daily was the show okay. I was watching one day. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, I saw Richard's video pop up yep. in my suggested videos, uh, you know, on YouTube. And I go, Oh, I'm just going to listen to this guy and see what he's talking about. And that's how I got introduced to Hicks. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. I, uh, I heard you mention that maybe I think one time, but, but it's cool to hear it again on stream because that's, yeah. uh, you know, just a lot more relatable, but yeah, I've for, for just like a little background on mine. So I've been in crypto since, since like March, 2017. And then Richard, when I finally got into like crypto Twitter, I, I didn't realize like I first found crypto from Reddit and then I found because I never used Twitter. Like I was logged in, but then had an account, but never used it because similar to you, which is all toxic, like just absolutely. Yeah. Toxicity. And then yeah. someone said like, oh, you know, there's this thing called crypto Twitter and kind of like a subsection of a community of crypto within all of Twitter. So long story short, I uh, found Richard Hart through that in 2017. Um, been in hex since day one, since way before day one, like, you know, obviously we all had like a claim day for, for hex. Uh, if you had Bitcoin, there was a claim, a free claim that you could do that lasted 351 days, I think. And then, um, then there was the adoption amplifier with the Ethereum. So when, uh, yeah. when it finally came out on, I think like December 2nd or something was when the adoption amplifier opened was when, uh, when we were all able to you know, average in. So uh, been in since day one, man. And it's cool to hear, cool to hear your story. Cause when the person shared the black square on, on Twitter, shared your, your YouTube channel, I uh, had never heard of you. And then in the community, and then, uh, and then when you said that you'd been around for 
you know, like six months and whatnot. It's like, oh, cool, man. This guy's an OG. And then I was listening <laughs> to your, uh, your, you know, just your, um, I don't know, a couple of your streams, and it's, uh, it, it's cool, cool to, cool to hear your, uh, not consensus, but like your opinions and whatnot on like the Twitter and stuff like that, and you know, kind of yeah. keeping your sphere, you know, legit and positive and whatnot, and, and all these other people effing off can, uh, you know, can yeah. just do exactly that, you know, can scooch to the side. I, I had somebody just say something yesterday that just kind of like struck me as odd. And I, and I thought that that's kind of like a, a normal, uh, a normal uh, reaction to people when you have, when you start talking about cryptocurrencies in general, uh, this person basically, I said, well, yeah, I'm, I'm working with something right now that I think is very exciting. It's nice and new. And it's, it, it it's something that I like the design of it. I like the functionality of it and everything else. And then, all of a sudden this girl just comes off and she goes, Oh, I thought that was a, I always thought that as a multi-level marketing scheme. <laughs> and I go, yeah, yeah. And I just, I mean, I, I get to the point now where I don't even feel like I want to be some kind of evangelist or anything, or I don't want to be one of those right. people that are trying to, you know, it's like, you know, leading a horse to water, but you can't make a drink mm -hmm. that whole thing. But the thing that's really kind of surprising is the the lack of knowledge about the general condition of the economic state of the United States. Most people have no clue as to any macroeconomic condition of the United States because they're looking at these and these mainstream media channels. It seems like a lot of those people have got the wool pulled over their eyes as well. They just they're just believing the crap that's getting fed to them as well. And it's a, it's a really sad situation because there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be stuck in a really, really bad situation here soon. And um, they're going to just go, hey, how'd this happen? Where, you know, when did all this happen? Yeah. I mean, it's, especially for someone like yourself that I've, you know, like I said, heard, heard share your story, even just in this stream while I was down, uh, while I was like lining in, uh, signing in to, to HAP is that... <sighs> One thing that I've experienced, like it's so easy to see like someone's problems or in this case, the country's problems from the outside, yeah. right? But a lot of people, one second, let me turn off my, uh, my notification here. Um, but a lot of people when when they're like involved in it or they're part of the country or just consuming a whole bunch of nonsense in reality and, uh, and kind of like propaganda and misleading information, uh, a lot of people get conditioned to just like make that their, their reality. Uh, when, when in reality, to your point, um, a lot of people, like even in America, I've seen studies saying like the average American can't afford, it's either like 400 or a thousand dollars, but the, the actual ratio of Americans that couldn't, couldn't afford it. And anyways, uh, a lot of people, they, they don't have savings. They don't have investments because of uh, inflation, because of how the, the financial system works, at least in America. Um, people are being diluted and they're almost being encouraged to to spend uh, spend their fiat uh, immediately because otherwise it's just gonna it's just gonna get inflated and, and lose value so things like hex are are uh, i mean i i grew up with my grandparents uh, and for i think 15 years giving me a savings bond every birthday and every christmas for me and all my <laughs> brothers and that yep. would be from 25 dollars principal to 50 but then when I was doing a stream the other day, I was talking about that what what that what that two x doesn't factor in is the actual inflation and dilution that that value gets by uh, you know the Fed printing more money. The the devaluation of the dollar, yeah, yeah. I, I and I and you know what? For most Americans, they don't understand that concept. It's just a really uh, abstract concept. They just go, "What? What? I don't you know." They glaze over. <laughs> Well, part of it's the education system too, like like being just taught nonsense that's not actually valuable, as opposed to how the world actually works, and and um, that's why I really fell in love with like Richard and his content was because uh, I've always been. I, I mentioned having three older brothers, and then you know my dad and mom. They're, I they're have three brothers, older brothers uh, too. <laughs> oh, really? Are, are you the youngest, yeah. or do you have any sisters? Or I'm the youngest. Uh, I have three older brothers and a younger sister. Yeah. Okay, cool. Nice. I don't have any sisters, but yeah, I'm, I'm the youngest two and, and have uh, three older brothers. I'm actually going to grab my, uh, just my charger cable just so, so my battery on my phone doesn't drain. But, but, oh, okay, uh, that's cool. but, but before I do that real quick, uh, I, I do want to mention that, yeah, when, when I got into crypto in 2017, it was initially something that's obviously not hex, right? Cause that didn't come out till 
you know, December 2nd, 20, uh, 2019. But um, anyways, I had found Richard's content, fell in love with it because I could, I could sincerely see that he was honest. Even if he was wrong, he was still like, I, I could still feel that that was his legitimate opinion and things like that. So yeah, he finally started talking about like, oh, you know, Ethereum is not as bad as I thought it was. And he started talking about creating a cryptocurrency that could help do that. Uh, he pivoted a little bit from a proof of work cryptocurrency called like compu uh, computation fluid dynamics. He pivoted from that to something that was more relevant to the average normie, right? Which is saving for your future, which is monetizing the value of time. So most people like yeah. my friends and, you know, some people ask like, oh, how do I onboard people? Well, the easiest way of doing it without someone putting in any effort, if you care about them, like for my girlfriend, for my brothers, for my parents, uh, I've set, like, I've created their own MetaMask accounts with their own, yeah. you know, passphrase that I, I give love to them, but, but keep a copy of myself. And then you can, you can create a stake for them and you can choose whatever time, like their birthdays or Christmas, stuff like that. But some of them, like I, I initially put in like a hundred dollars and then did it for their birthday of 2021 and then Christmas of 2021. And then for some of them, I added, more like you know did quattro cinco stakes and and you know expelled it out uh farther for for multiple years and so they're they're even if they're not used to the concept of like holy shit this is locked for five years 10 years 15 years they're gonna see the interest grow and maybe that'll finally compel them to to understand the the value of the time monetization hex does yeah yeah, I mean, that was what I, I got that kind of that I had that same sentiment when I first started watching uh, Richard. What I was really kind of impressed was with him was is like that he was like a bulldog with regards to debating with all of these people who I thought were crypto geniuses, you know, and, and I was just thinking, you know, he's he's got some guys on here that are coming onto his show and just bad mouthing him. And he had rebuttals for every single one of their questions. And I was going, this guy really knows his shit. He's really, really sharp. And that's probably one of the things that impressed me the most. He did not back down from any kind of argument. He knew so much about monetary policies and all these other things, high level, you know, macroeconomic issues. And he's just like rattling off these answers. And I was going, yeah, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's, he's really good. And when it came to, him talking about his his start like literally setting up a business and being so entrepreneurial at a young age and having that you know mm -hmm. stereo automotive stereo business in his in his front yard you know just like hooking up people's sound systems and stuff in their cars i mean that to me it, it shows a person that's not not like a hustler or something but just somebody who's really going out there and i i know a guy here in germany that's very similar in his activities he's just one of those kind of guys he's like a workaholic but he's he's just really bright and he's really good at whatever entrepreneurial you know project he's he's working on and and that's what kind of struck me about richard as well he just he's just one of those kind of guys that's got a the golden touch you know well i mean i i totally agree and and even someone like yourself or the like less than a week the the few times that i've been able to consume of uh, some of your content. Uh, one thing Richard really does have, whether people agree with it or not, like he's got a multitude of information, but is, you know, he's got kind of like a, a, a no bullshit type of attitude. Right. And yeah, I yeah. Like that. I just, like that. You know, yeah. Cutthroat to the point where, where most people, they, they doctor up things or they try and use fancy words. So people don't actually understand, uh, understand what the person's talking about. And they just, you know, come off perceptually as, as intelligent and smart. Like the, the way that you can tell a good teacher is how, how well can they break it down? Like, you know, there's a, there's people saying like, Oh, how do you, uh, how do you break this down? Like teach it to me. Like I'm like five or teach it to me. Like I'm, you know, a, a junior high kid, like make it as, as simple as possible when you're trying to teach someone something. So with right. Richard, he's, he's created even before hex and even before I think Bitcoin, uh, he, he created a uh, book, you know, Sci-Fi, and then he also created another one called How to Fix the World. But it's uh, it's available for free on Telegram, just t.me forward slash S-C-I-V-I-V-E. And uh, you can put that link in the you could put that link in the chat. That would be cool. OK, let me do that. Now. Uh, 
so that's what we look like on a mobile device in the landscape position too. That's one of the things that I really like about this platform. It 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 comes across really nice on uh, Android and Apple devices. Yeah, you know, one thing you'd or someone had asked was like, or you, yeah, was was like, oh, are you using Streamyard or um, or Restream? And I, I do use Streamyard. The the thing is, is I need to go back and and uh, rewind because I've only. I, I've been so comfortable with StreamYard. Like, first off, it's just a new process in general. I've, I'm 24, but have had my YouTube channel for like 14 years and used to make just one-off videos or things that I was, I guess, interested in. But then when, yeah. when Hex came out, uh, I was actually compelled. Like, when, when I got into crypto in 2017, I wasn't compelled to make videos about Litecoin or Ethereum or things like this that I was involved in, or at least buying. But when Hex came out, I was. So um, the point that I'm trying to get at is I have OBS downloaded on my computer before, before I purchased this gaming laptop, maybe like a month ago, uh, the girlfriend's MacBook Air or my laptop at my house that I was using just wasn't powerful enough to run all the streaming stuff. But now it is, and now I need to just learn OBS because I need to rewind your video and, and set it up somehow through StreamYard because uh, you know, that yeah. would make my videos a lot more professional. Yeah, you can run uh, StreamYard uh, and OBS together really easily. It's, it, it works really well together. Yeah. I need to look into that a little bit more. I've actually, I was using StreamYard when it first got launched. And I liked StreamYard, but then I heard that they got, they got acquired by Hopin. And I was just like, okay, whatever. I'll go back to using Restream. Because <laughs> the developers at Restream are really sharp too. It's like they... They were, they were really doing a lot of really good things. And then when they set up their, their dashboard to allow people to jump in to your stream, I was like, oh, that's a game changer. Now I can invite people right on to Restream. So, so the, and then this one popped up, uh, Haps popped up, and my friend Bobby, he goes, yeah, he goes, you got to go check out Haps. And I said, okay, an another, another group platform? Because <laughs> we've been on so many. We were on this other platform called Blab. Uh, and that's what I came up with the name Blab Cafe. So yeah, it's okay. it's the f amazing how many people are developing different things for video conferencing. Uh, hey Donald, do you have any questions to ask uh, Brand about Hex? Um, yeah, when is it going to go to a dollar or five dollars or ten dollars? <laughs> I, I think as soon as twenty twenty one, we could see one dollar. Um, that's just my. I mean, that's kind of like. Mm, as far as as far as like the top of it, like I, I don't know when it's going to be. Like every every market has cycles, and, and Hex has had its market cycles. Say like compared to Bitcoin or Ethereum, much more fast, right? Of a peak and then a down consolidation, or sorry, a down a peak and then a down and then like a sideways consolidation and then back up. Right. Again, right. It, every time it keeps just ratcheting upwards. So yeah. I mean, I think this year at the very least. On, on a high, like I said, I don't know when it's going to be. I don't know what the price is going to be, you know, December 31st or New Year's Eve and stuff like that. But I know that in 2020, the hex price ran up to two cents in uh, New Year's Eve. And I know that when I was getting into hex uh, December and January and throughout the whole rest of the adoption amplifier that we were saying like, oh my God, man, if it just hits one penny, like we're, we're set, you know? And then it hits one penny and yeah. it's like, holy shit. Well, well, now you know. Now you gotta you gotta raise the standard and raise the bar and just realize we are really really early. So to answer yeah, your question, super I think, early. I think a dollar. <laughs> yeah, I, I think a dollar this year. I don't know when, but I think a dollar at least. Um, as far as five dollars, I would say within two years, and then you know from there it's the, the hey, cool thing uh, about hacks. It, on on one of your next broadcasts, could you do me a favor? And I know that you you're technically advanced enough to when you're looking at charts, you could probably do this a lot quicker and easier than I could. But could you take like a little uh, a screenshot of like the first year of the chart of Hex and the first mm -hmm. year of uh, of Ethereum and the first year of Bitcoin and just kind of like kind of like give those like almost like an overlay so then you we can actually okay. compare them because i think that would be a really interesting chart for people to look at i know i know richard has actually posted it before but i'll uh i'll, I'll do i'll do so yeah i'll totally do something like that because right now yeah. i have it uh, pulled up for anyone on on just uh 
you know, for Ethereum, for Bitcoin, you kind of have to look those up separately. But for Hex, uh, one of the one of the developers, Firebun, did uh, Uniswap.hex.vision is the URL. Uh, so that's the it automatically goes to the kind of like just the current Hex price and liquidity and whatnot on uh, on Hex. But yeah, I'll totally do that. That shouldn't that would be great. Honestly, very much time, and I think it would be very very beneficial. I mean, when it comes to things like live streams and YouTube videos, like everyone has their their own. Oh, that chart there. exists. Nice. Okay, cool. Uh, the one thing I was going to say is it, I don't know if you heard Zakia. She's a friend of mine who has a her she has a home homemade soap business. She actually makes handmade soap, kind of like in Fight Club, and yeah, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. she's amazing at making her own uh, handmade soaps. But anyways, uh, she's very entrepreneurial and stuff. And did you hear what she was talking about? One of the first things out of her mouth when she started asking me about the stuff is she said, uh, so what was this deal with GameStop? And I'm like, uh, okay, I'll try to explain it to you as best I can, you know? And then it was like, it's funny that because of mainstream media that people get picked up, they pick up little bits of information about crazy shit like that that's going on, but they never hear about stuff that's real legitimate and really solid. You know, like things that you should be investing in, you know, and, and they hear stuff that's like wild because there's these really crazy gains that some people are making. But it's like playing Russian roulette. Some of those people are going to get wrecked, you know. They're just going to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, and they're just going to get hammered. Well, in, in the disgusting thing about the cryptocurrency space, you know, one, one thing that Richard has mentioned is those that have talked about price in the past have been scammers uh, or the, the actual the actual chance of someone talking about price and appreciation and this and stuff like that in cryptocurrency from such an honest perspective. Um, the, the ones that are actually honest are very, very few and far in between. And so uh, when it comes down to you know, to your point, information, misinformation, uh, a lot of people, they're just going on to YouTube or they're going on to coin market cap and, and they're, uh, they're just doing the minimum amount of research to, to try and educate themselves. But, but it's the Dunning Kruger effect because they don't know what they don't know. And they don't like, they think they might know like, Oh, I'm on coin market cap. Like I have all this information or, you know, I've been in crypto for one year. I have all this information. But things yeah. like hex have been gate kept to such a such a crazy extent, like a Barbara Streisand uh, extent, where where now people are like, wait, you know, I thought hex was a scam. You know, you're saying this thing is the top appreciating asset of 2020. Like you're saying that this thing went to yeah. top five market cap. Like where the hell was that in in my purview and in my influencer circle that I follow. So that's why it is so important that people do their own research, like those influencers claim. Um, but but unfortunately, most people are too lazy to do so. So I guess the only other way of um, of attacking that audience and getting that audience's information is also competing with the influencers that are just bullshit and con artists. And you know yeah. they're um, they're they're promoting leveraging trading and they're promoting things that people lose ninety nine percent of the time and they get wrecked on. And even in trading, you know, you see people kill themselves. And so yeah. things like hex can still monetize the value of time. And you can hold your private keys. It's a cryptocurrency. You don't have to stake it, but if you want to, you can earn interest. Well, things like that sound a lot better than someone else owning custody. And you can still earn interest yeah. and even a lot more than the centralized uh, uh, counterparties and other competitors. So it's it's amazing, man. Yeah. I, I, I think that one of the things too, that when, when I was on that very first, uh, like I was watching one of Richard's uh, discussions that he was having with like this Bitcoin maximalist, right? And he was just ripping them to shreds. Like every time he would come up with some, you know, point, he'd just like have a counterpoint for him every single time. I'm like, oh, this guy's just like making this guy look like a fool. <laughs> it was just amazing. Well, I, yeah. But, I, yeah. I heard you mentioning that earlier in the stream and and yeah. one of the things that Richard's like, you know, even people in the chat had mentioned like, oh, Richard, when are you ever going to lose a debate? And why don't you lose debates and arguments? Well, one thing Richard has mentioned is like, as long as I'm on the, the rightful side and the side of truth, then he's never going to lose a debate type deal. So, right. you know, right. the stuff that he uh, and, and a lot of people that are successful, the things that we realize are, oh, you know, my current paradigm or worldview might be X, but, you know, you got to 
sometimes you got to update your worldview and change your worldview for things that are actually coming into reality. And so I think a lot of the Bitcoin maximalists, which, which Richard was one of them until like 2017, 2018, a lot of them, they have their heads stuck in the sand and, and they're, they're being, uh, they're sheltering themselves and they're echo chambering themselves into a small group uh, that in reality, uh, things like Ethereum, they have more fees than the Bitcoin network and things like Ethereum are, uh, and I did share it out too, but things like Ethereum, the actual Ethereum network, uh, you can wrap the Bitcoin code and have wrapped Bitcoin on the Ethereum network. So, you know, you have a whole bunch of these Bitcoin maximalists that, that bullshit with their thumb up their ass. Sorry for being so um, explicit, but they're, they're thinking, oh, lightning is going to solve Bitcoin and, you know, lightning is going to allow Bitcoin to be accepted at every retail store. Well, you know, what does, what, what store accepts Berkshire Hathaway stock, you know, things like that. Um, the actual monetization yeah. and the actual point of a crypto, most people, you know, would bullshit you and say, oh, I'm in it for the tech, right? No, you're in it for the wicked price gains because you heard someone that made 700% in a week, you know, things like this. So hence, yeah. it not only gives people that gratification, but the way that it's designed and the way that you can actually program code and program money, which is what cryptocurrency can allow you to do is unlike nothing we've ever seen before in society and in reality. And even in China, you've mentioned, even in China, they're natively using cryptocurrencies, um, but they're, uh, you know, whether they realize it or not. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, they're, they're, the, the idea that a person's making a purchase on PayPal or they're, they're making a purchase through Amazon or eBay or anything, they're basically doing electronic digital transactions. The only one of the only differences between a cryptocurrency and those transactions is those are going through a centralized hub or a centralized server where all that information is going to one company and they're basically accumulating all that content right there. You know, all those transactions are being uh, are being accumulated on their servers. So PayPal has their own servers. Uh, Amazon has their own servers. So all of this information is being kept right there for, for the transactions. But cryptocurrency and a decentralized cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Hex are it's basically dispersed throughout the whole internet. Extremely desirable. Heck yeah. <laughs> Please do us a favor and share this out. Hell yeah. Um, I, I think to your point, you know, uh, you, you mentioned like Amazon, and, and Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, uh, and Hex. Uh, Amazon, Richard's mentioned this multiple times, but the actual use case of a blockchain is, you know, it is for the censorship resistance and things like this, but the actual use case uh, that a lot of these, these tokens and, and blockchains are being created for are actually just not much utility, right? And so things like Amazon yeah. Web Service, they'll sell you blockchain, but they won't use it themselves because the centralized version of the database is much more efficient. It's much more, you know, you kind of got to target your niche and what you actually want to do. And, and as far as accomplishing the goal. So when, when Richard, when he came up with something like Hex, he mentioned not only is the name just perfect and design perfect and things like this, it shows geomet geometric growth, you know, like, um, I don't know where the actual camera cuts off, but like up into the right and same thing with the actual design. It's, uh, it's, it's <laughs> like Richard a price chart. That, yeah. Well, in, in, you know, Bitcoin, uh, Hex is actually more similar to Bitcoin than it is to certificate of deposits. And it's, it's great that you can use the analogy for both, right? Because Bitcoin and Hex share a lot of similarities. There's just minute differences, right? As far as the actual, the algorithm that makes the cryptocurrency what it is, uh, you right. know, Hex is, is built on Ethereum and, and done via proof of work, proof of stake, and something like Bitcoin is is actually being mined for cell pressure like those those miners that are doing it with the electricity and with their asic miners well they got to pay their electricity bills so they're applying cell pressure to the market and to the spot price of bitcoin so when you have something like hex that that only pays inflation to the stakers and the average staker with the weighted average is like almost five years now well then holy shit, you know that actual inflation from what we've seen already and from what I've personally done with my stakes, I've restaked out and uh, not even, you know, scraped much of a profit here and there because I know we're in such an early time. So Hex is just designed yeah. amazingly. And, you know, all those that are gatekeeping it, 
and things like this. Like I said, it's like that Streisand effect where, where eventually people start to realize, oh, I'm, I'm a Bitcoin maximalist all these years, but you know, we're, we're actually seeing more productivity and more advancements in these other cryptocurrencies. So if those people just yeah. want to keep their heads stuck in the sand, they're just going to get left behind and they already have been left behind. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. The, those one of the things too is I was thinking like, um, have you ever seen where I mean, and I'm not I'm not a fan of hers or anything, but when I've watched a, an Oprah Winfrey show, when I used to watch network news or network television, I don't I haven't watched network television in probably 20 years. I literally don't sure. watch any network news or news channels or any yeah, yeah. kind of programming. So, anyways, but one of the last shows I remember watching, and I just caught a few minutes of a Oprah Winfrey show one time. And what was really funny is that she had this person on the show that was talking about their book launch. And literally within like a couple of days, it went to number one on Amazon bestseller list. And I, and I said that for an analogy, I said, if Hex ever had that kind of like publicity, it would just blow up like crazy because nobody, it's like, People in the mainstream, they just don't know about this stuff. They have no clue as to what it is. Could you imagine if Richard Hart could get onto the Oprah Winfrey show for 10 minutes exactly. or 15 minutes? He would like, well, you know, people, yeah. <laughs> that would people be too like Mark much Cuban. Fun. Are you familiar with Mark Cuban? Yeah, yeah, I know Mark Cuban. Yeah. Uh, so people Car like him. Grant Cardone, him. Grant Cardone, all those guys. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like pe people like uh, Mark Cuban, he's, he's mentioned and he's actually published his. Uh, or at least an article with his address that he's verified um, was his Ethereum address and was a whole bunch of like decentralized cryptocurrencies and DeFi and of the wallet, um, you know, he does have hex. And so things like, uh, to your point, things like Mark Cuban or Oprah Winfrey or Joe Rogan, things like that, that, you know, we might not um, participate in or watch, uh, things like that are popular and it's, it's what other people watch. So if you can get, uh, instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, if you can get those advertisements out there and get on the, uh, the channels and videos where people are, where their eyeballs are, then yeah. all it takes is like Richard Hart and Joe Rogan to be. Yeah. Able one, to one show. If he was jumping on Joe Rogan. Yeah, it would go crazy. Well, that's the thing, too, with mainstream media. And I mean, uh, Joe Rogan blows away all mainstream media metrics. Like, okay. I mean, okay. look at totally. metrics. Totally. He's like smoking everybody. And have you noticed what they've done? I just realized this the other day. When I looked at the Joe Rogan, uh, my Joe Rogan channel on the YouTube channel, I was thinking, what's going on? Because they, they took all of his long form, because he went from really doing all of these long form uh, video conversations and interviews to they, the guys who are in probably on his production team, they're taking like little snippets of the video and they're breaking it up and they're just stretching it out on YouTube. It's well, like, it, oh. It's because of his, he, he did sign a contract with Spotify where where his, his live streams, I think it was 2020 or, it, I don't know when the actual exact date was that it was enforced, but yeah, now via his contract, to my knowledge, to my understanding and awareness, it's it's just the Joe Rogan channel that used to be live streamed is now, is now not being streamed there. And the actual videos themselves are being chopped up into bite-sized pieces. Little like section. Done, but on YouTube, I think the actual content itself is part of his contract with Spotify where he can only, you know, stream on, uh, or I, I haven't consumed it yet, but I know that that's yeah. a contract with Spotify. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a diehard YouTuber. I mean, I've been using mm -hmm. YouTube since 2014. And that's one of the nice. things too, is like, I've subscribed to Joe Rogan when he literally had only had a, you know, a few hundred subscribers. I mean, I remember I was that far back and I was remembering watching his, his, his channel was just, growing so fast at one point and it was like wow this is really amazing but it was because he was having regular conversations with regular people and there was no commercial breaks there was no bullshit you know being thrown in and they didn't really have to think about uh they didn't have to really think about which you know rabbit hole they would go down you know they could talk about any topic and, and he had some really crazy people on his show and whether it be something he was scientifically he was talking about some scientific idea or he's talking about magic mushrooms and psilocybin or ayahuasca or something like that. And I'm going, oh, this guy's 
seriously into uh, you know hallucinogenics and stuff. And and it's really cool because there's no like taboo subjects on his show. He's he talks about all kinds of wild shit, and it's great. Well, and that's what makes it entertaining. I mean, yeah. It, it is what makes it entertaining because, you know, just like with, I don't know, uh, anything like, well, I guess with Joe Rogan specifically, yeah, like the people that might be more like scientific based or more politically based or whatever, you know, primary they have, they might not be interested in, you know, 50 or 60% of the videos. But if, you know, uh, a guest once a month or things like that can appeal to them then Joe Rogan's going to continue keeping their attention and their audience and their view. So I agree to your point that someone like Joe Rogan, he's not afraid to, you know, have a, not only like super controversial people on his show, but also cover those topics. And, and I think he's just like uh, appealing to the masses with that, like, uh, you know, you're spreading yourself more thin as opposed to just one area. So he's able to appeal to a lot of different topics and people. But He's he's a he's a pretty bright guy too. I mean, he's no slouch when it comes to his 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 uh his range of knowledge is is really broad. So it's it's good he can talk on so many different topics, you know, and uh, that's actually helps his show a lot. But you know, it's uh it's one of those things. Now the advertisers and stuff have gotten a hold of him, and I'm sure that they're wanting to uh you know manipulate that whole situation. But I mean, you know. Like because what what I what I noticed when I went back over to the channel and I and I noticed that there was all of these little sections, what they had done is they they would take a YouTube a YouTube broadcast and cut it up, and they're making those little bite sized uh, sections. But I thought it was something also to do with the monetization system over on YouTube because it's like you see there's like twenty thousand views of this one little video. Well, what if we do this? 20,000 views and break it up into 10 different videos. So all of a sudden those numbers get exponentially greater. It's like, Oh, okay. Now I see it. Duh. I'm actually, I'm actually like doing that on my channel. So just on youtube.com slash ballet brand, or even on my links.com slash ballet brand, I am broad, uh, broadening out into, you know, not just hacks, but like doing clips of other people's videos, like Richard Hart. Uh, I've got a, uh, a download, a six hour stream download that he did with Roger Burr, who is the founder of uh, Bcash, Bitcoin Cash. And what I do is just, just on my uh, PC here, just cut it up in, uh, in the photos tool. And, and that way you can condense something into bite size segments. So, so yeah, I mean, to your point, um, you know, if that's what Joe Rogan's doing to, to help the algorithms and to kind of like maximize the productivity and uh, monetization, then that's great. And that would actually make a lot of sense. So I'm slowly broadening and broadening into the, the clips, like on my channel, I've got uh, some that's just only clips and, you know, maybe have like 30 or 40 of them. But to my friend that's in the other room, I was telling him like, you know, it's, it, yeah, it, it is so much easier for someone to just watch the, the clip that appeals to them, right. A one minute segment to, you know, maybe all the way up to like six or 10 minutes at most. Um, if yeah. someone can just co consume that golden content, as opposed to having to watch six hours just to find it, then you're going to get more of a outreach. Yeah, I, I can tell you what I did is um, the nice thing about using also uh, YouTube premium or YouTube prime, whatever they call it. it. It's really nice because you can turn off the screen and plug your earbuds in. And like I take my dog for walks, I'm walking for an hour and a half to two hours sometimes. So it was always one of my favorite podcasts to listen to. I could just turn on a Joe Rogan podcast and listen to him for a couple of hours. It was like really cool. And now they have them all. Yeah. So that's just. Yeah. But anyways, getting back to the Hex topic, what, what I was going to say, too, is I think that um, at some point in time, it, the same thing that happened with uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum and all well, I don't think it happened so much with Ethereum because people already had a good understanding of Bitcoin by at that by that time. But I think what happened with with uh, Bitcoin in its inception stages and like when it was going like flatlining there for a while and Mount Gox and all that other shit was happening. What I think was happening is that that early early section of a uh, point in its lifespan. It was basically not, in, in my opinion, it was not being adopted hardly by anybody but the techies because it was, like I said, it was impossible for me to just go out and buy some of it. I was like going, I want to buy this. I want to use it. 
but it was it was like how do you do it how do you physically just do that i didn't care about oh, hearing about yeah. miners and all that shit i just wanted to buy it and use it and that's what's nice about what what i said about richard's platform it's like okay i've got this and i've got this and i can do it i got metamask i got mm -hmm. the the website boom everything works mm -hmm. but now uh, i heard you talking about uh, staker the staker app yes. the other day now what's the functionality of that is that is that like going to incorporate uh, the functionality of adding other cryptocurrencies to staker or is it just going to continue to uh, be right enabling people to just stake hex so currently on staker app even i've got it on just the all my links.com slash valley at brand it just leads you to just the url staker.app or just on ios or google play store you know just download staker app but you know to your point what it does is and they actually just released these features out so i can talk about them but um uh, anyways so what they've released through some of the updates is is it creates a, a new separate wallet that's like it's um it's just a newer technology it's called gnosis safe and it's a type of like a smart contract wallet type deal and what that allows staker app to do is it allows you know you you can onboard via fiat on the staker app and uh, you can also you can buy ethereum currently i mean i don't know what they're going to broaden into they might just stay in the hex niche and ethereum niche but it's uh, ethereum usdc and and hex i believe that you can buy from directly the application so you know to your point and i even heard you talking on a stream the other day that was you know one of the things you mentioned was if if the the cost of the fee or doing the business and whatnot was more expensive than just yeah yeah and just in general like the if, if the fee for a stake is is more expensive then you know you're just going to stick with with uh you know using go.hex.com and then metamask and things like that but the the cool thing about staker app and to, to get to kind of answer your question now that I have more information on it is um, yeah, it, it is a little bit more expensive to to do a stake on staker.app. But what it does is it uh, appeals to the masses and to the actual widespread adoption of Hex. Uh, one of the people in the community, his name is Bitfinesse. And one of the things that he said on many other streams, but mine included, is that <laughs> One of the problems with hex is it is too great right like people they hear holy shit, you know 38 percent apy it's you know and you're able to hold your own private keys and it's a cryptocurrency that was the top performing asset of 2020 but when i i had my coworker ask me he's like brand how do i get in the hex i sent him like four or five different links and he's like dude this is way too many steps so things like uh, staker.app yeah. and yeah. you know now we've got a referral code within it it, it allows um even though it might be a little bit more expensive to do the to do the cost of business, those that are getting into it, they don't really realize the the whole MetaMask, the whole go.hex.com thing. So if they're just uh, having Staker.app be their first paradigm of like crypto or hacks and things like that, I think it gives a really good um, not only a perception, but it's a really good experience for everyone. Right. Well, I'm I'm looking at something right here is the stats, global statistics on on for stakers. There's 26.2 thousand stakers. Uh, so much. Uh, let's see, 495 million dollars have been staked at to this point. Uh, duration is an average of 4.87 years, and estimated average percentage uh, yearly average percentage is 37.57 percent. That's cool average. About hex is, exactly. It, that's it that's average. that's on the Staker app though. That's on the Staker app. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's taking some of the statistics that are on uh, Hex Live, which is just another URL that uh, that Steph created, and then Firebun created uh, Hex Vision. But it, it just takes that statistic and yeah, it tells you the average for that that length of stake, right? So the four point eight seven or whatever the number was, uh, that would I think average the you know, the, the APY, but the, the cool thing that uh, will always remain in Hex is there's there's different design functions. One of them is called bigger pays better for a bonus on your shares and on your Hex. And one of them is called longer pays better. And similar to like a jumbo CD or some of the CDs, at least in the real world, this is one of the things that Richard copied like directly. It was 20% uh, more shares every year extra that you stake up to 10 and then at 10, or 3,641 days. 
Oh, you just froze. I don't know if you can just uh, refresh your browser and, br and it'll bring you back. Okay, there we go. Cool. I, I, I don't well, know what that, happened. My, my phone just cut out. But the, that's the last cool, thing though. I want to say, just to finish off, is, is so 3,641 days maximizes your T-share. And what a T-share is, it's a... It's, it's something you only get in exchange for staking HEX. So if you're holding HEX, uh, just HEX, it's an ERC-20 token, and you can, you, know, you can exchange any other ERC-20 token in the Ethereum network for HEX, and you can just hold it liquid, right? So if it's got price appreciation or if you're a trader uh, explain, and things like this. Explain to, explain to the viewers that don't know what, mm -hmm. what it means to either hold on to something or stake it. So to, to keep it in its liquid form, it, it's basically the same thing with a lot of different investments that liquid liquidity means that it's something that you can transfer in and out of other currencies, yeah. fiat currencies and other things easier when it's in its liquid form. So basically, if you're not locking up your, your hex into a stake or a, like almost like a certificate of deposit, you're keeping it liquid, which be, means that basically you're just keeping it in limbo and you're just you're going to use it when you see something that you either need to purchase or maybe you need to maybe you need to trade it for something else or you need to go out and buy a new car or whatever. You're keeping your money liquid for a specific reason. You know, people's right. reason for keeping money liquid is, uh, I mean, it's just immense amounts of reasons that you could do that. Sure. Or should do totally. that. I mean, it, the, the cool thing about Hex is, I mean, it, it, it's similar to, to anything. You know, sometimes you hear such straw man arguments or just some stupid arguments that are like, oh, why does this have value? And it's like, well, why did Bitcoin have value? Why did it go up for right now? It's, uh, I mean, it's 3.48 million X up from a penny. But but to your point, um, the thing about Hex is, yeah, you can buy it, you can sell it, you don't have to stake it. But what staking does is it rewards you uh, with interest, uh, trustlessly. So Hex has a 3.69% annual inflation that's on, I believe, all minted coins. It's got a 3.9% capped inflation. And that's actually less inflation that Bitcoin had in its first 10 years. Its first year of uh, Bitcoin, it hyperinflated like 100%. Uh, it had a huge inflation. A lot of people don't realize that. But um, anyways, so if you if you stake Hex, you can, it's a smart contract that you're interacting with, right? So it's right. not any entity. It's not Richard Hart. It's not any of that. It's just a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain. But you can lock it anyway, uh, anywhere from one day up to 5,555 days. So I was mentioning before my phone which got is, cut off that 15.2 years. Is that like uh, 10 years or 15 years or something is the max or what? So, so yeah, the maximum is 5,555 days, which is like 15.2. And then there's a couple other decimals. Um, oh, okay. Years. So, yeah. and at 3,641 days uh, before my phone kicked me out was, is, is the actual maximum that you can get on shares. Uh, so it'll three times your T-share uh, if you stake for that that 10 year bonus. And otherwise the subsequent the subsequent years that you stake anywhere from one to 10 will pay you 20% more T-shares or the amount of uh, like similar to mining power for every extra year that you do. But the thing that some people don't understand and, and I didn't understand it until uh, a little bit later on is you know, if, if the maximum is you can do 5,555 days, but the maximum of your shares is only 3,641, well, what's the difference? And and why should I lock and and hold on to something like uh, Hex for 15.2 years versus 10? And the reason is because the actual share rate of Hex is really what makes the analog for compounding interest. So right now, the before big payday, uh, the hex share rate was like 1.0 something. And then now it's like 1.67. So it's like 16,700 or maybe 16,800 hex for one t-share. That actual number of hex per t-share, which is what allows you to claim interest and admit your own interest. That's the number that like it's, it's always going to cost uh, more hex for a t-share. 
And so if you lock it up for, if you do your stake for the maximum, as opposed to say 10 years, then you're holding on to that share rate. What it does is it locks in your share rate for that day. So if it's, if it's 16,800 hex per T share, well then if you're locking it up for 15.2 years, then it's actually that number divided by three because you're getting three times the amount of T shares. And what it does is at 10 years, a lot of people, a, a lot of big whales, you can see it on hex.vision, you can see the expiration of people's stakes, but a lot of them, you know, there's a wall at like 10 years. And then between 10 and 15 years, the maximum of the three times share rate and the maximum amount of time in the contract is the golden zone where when other people's stakes are ending, it's going to make that share price keep ratcheting up. And if you have a 15.2 year stake, you're continuing to hold on to that share rate that you got for such a cheaper rate than before. Okay. Wow. So it seems to me that uh, you're pretty well versed with uh, with regards to mathematics. Uh, you you feel pretty comfortable playing around with math. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, <laughs> growing. I mean, I'm, I'm 24, right? So like growing up in in school and whatnot, I always honestly like wasn't a fan of it, right? Wasn't a fan of like the authorities and and oh, you got to do this and that. But um, just because I wasn't interested at that time doesn't mean I didn't have the the willingness to learn, right? I was always like. I've always been like a lifelong student and, and yeah, the ability to, yeah. I've always been a yeah. lifelong student, but when it's something that doesn't interest you or it's just monotonous BS, then it's like, okay, you know, I'm probably not going to give it my hundred percent. But when I got into crypto before I got into crypto in 2017 and like 2015, 2016 and the early part of 2017, I was, I was always interested in other topics. Right. So I was, you know, <laughs> learning about Federal Reserve, finances, currency, fiat, oh, okay. how all of it works. And so yeah. that's kind of what sparked me to get into my coworker. I was working at CenturyLink in Bellevue, Washington, and uh, him and I were working together. He was, I was like 19 at the time, and he's like maybe 63. He owned a precious metals, a uh, like a precious metal shop, um, you know, decades before. And he was telling me about precious metals, and we'd always listen to, uh, like um, like market information on on the television because we had to keep it on for the the products that we were selling and long story short I was on other uh, social medias like Reddit and that's where I found out like oh Litecoin is you know if Bitcoin is digital gold then Litecoin is digital silver and so that kind of spun me down the the um, the cryptocurrency rabbit hole and I didn't realize what I was actually getting into until like a month after I purchased my, my Litecoin at the time in 2017, because I purchased it for like 30 bucks a month later, it was like 60. And I said, Holy yeah. shit, this isn't the same amount that I put in here. And then, you know, <laughs> you go through the gambit and you, you learn how the, the market cycles work and how the, how the fundamentals and the technicals um, yeah. of a product work. And it found me into uh, Richard Hart into Hex and I uh, put all my eggs in the one basket in the Hex and it's, it's, uh, yeah. it's worked for me. So, there, there's a there's a comment here. It says hex is based on truth, and I would say I would go further and say it, it's based on math, because <laughs> I mean it's oh, like for sure. yeah. yeah, just he just came up with some really good solutions, mathematical solutions right. to CDs, and it's like yeah. When I saw it too, I was like looking at it. I was just thinking, wow, this is so much better than than Bitcoin and Ethereum because it's actually something that's functional. And it was designed with a specific purpose in mind when he designed it. It's like, okay, well, what's the most important thing that people invest in when they want to save money for long term? Certificate of deposits. And he goes, oh, I'm going to take that technology and put it into a cryptocurrency. And he did. And it's like, simple, but it works. <laughs> Cool. Well, and it's, it's like, like what has use case, you know, and, and to your point, yeah. he, uh, he took something that was, was, I mean, right now globally, I think it's between like the U S and China, it's like $7.2 trillion are in assets of like certificate of deposits or time locks, things like that. Yeah. So he just took something that worked in the real world, except instead of you uh, getting screwed over by, by dark patterns and by fees and things like this, that the traditional finance does um, as a staker, and as someone that's part of the network, you get rewarded for being honest, right? If I, if I, if I do even like a one week stake and I actually yeah. follow through for that one week, 
well then you're earning interest not only from the 3.69 inflation rate and not only by how many people the percentage of people that are staked but by people that end stake and didn't do what they said they were going to do you know you see people nuking their accounts yeah. on twitter that's why i asked for what your twitter was because there's uh, I understand. Like, I'm, I'm not a fan. Of, I like. I don't follow any other topic on Twitter besides hacks and like crypto. Like, maybe Ethereum and a little bit of Bitcoin. But as far as yeah. Twitter, there's like these bots, or even on Telegram, there's these bots that tell you, oh, hundred thousand. Like, like last night or today, it was like hundred and like sixty something thousand uh, U.S. dollars worth of hex were nuked because someone only staked like they only served like fifty one out of like three thousand days of their stake. And so those rewards go to the stakers and you get rewards. All the stakers, yeah. Said you're gonna do. Yeah, that just goes to all the stakers and it gets divvied up between all the people that are still staked. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really cool system too. It's like if you're gonna screw up, well, you know, there's a lot of reasons for a people to emergency end stake. Mm -hmm. But I mean if you're yeah. gonna screw up and you're gonna go, Hey, I wanna I wanna close out my stake, they go, Okay, well, you know you're gonna have to pay penalties. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like Depending on how long that stake is, it right. can be well, and, and, <laughs> well, It's kind of like what we were talking about earlier and in, in what myself and a lot of other people that are in Hex and that understand it have alluded to is, um, you know, cryptocurrency is great, but there's, there's also like the traditional system that we're in. So if you do have an emergency, like I think that just part of finances and economics, like, yeah, you should have some sort of like safety net, right, that can cover you for X amount of months or things like that. But to your point, if someone did have to emergency end stake, well, it's, it's, it's all based on code and math and the, the staker dot app that actually will tell you based on that algorithm and that math equation, it'll tell you what you would, uh, what you would gain or what you would lose if you ended it early. And so to your point, like um, you, you never know what's going to come up, right? None of us, uh, not, not myself at least uh, expected, the the world changing stuff um you know don't want to say it on youtube but you know the thing that happened um no one expected that and so like a lot of people even the jobs that they're working oh now they're unemployed things like this so my, my point in saying all of this is i i i do stakes but but i also have like maybe two or three percent of hex liquid so you know i got a few thousand dollars worth of hex liquid if i ever did run into an emergency and um you know, just just do what you said you're going to do, and the actual contract will reward you on a daily basis based on how many shares you have and the length of so, the stake. To to that point, though, uh, I mean, I, I'm thinking though also that some people that are probably just getting in, and I mean, I've heard these kind of comments posted in different chats before, where people are talking about you know smaller stakes and shorter periods of time, and I heard Richard say that too. He goes. He goes, if you can't afford the gas for your transaction, then, you know, you're really screwing yourself because it's like, why, why would you do such a short stake? It doesn't make sense. So, and, and I think this is kind of like that whole facet or that whole idea of, it's almost like ADHD. These people have short attention spans. They don't want to do anything for long term because they're just so accustomed to doing either day trading or some other bullshit, you know, kind of project where they're, right. they're in and out of these trades in such short periods of time that they can't even imagine, oh, I'm going to stake for, you know, a year. Is that, you know, they go, what do I do in the meantime? You know, sit around twiddling my thumbs. What am I going to do? So, I, I mean, for me, it's like, I'm, I'm patient. I don't care. I don't, I don't mind the idea of just saying, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to stake for, one year and one month, I'm going to stake for one year and two months, you know, and I'll, I'll just incrementally go out there and do it that way. And and to me, it's no big deal because I figure, shit, I got time on my hands and I'm not like, I'm not starving. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't have to think about, you know, I mean, a person your age might be thinking about, oh, fuck, I'm going to get that Lambo. <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't need a Lambo. I need a Tesla. I need, I want a well, Tesla. Yeah. Dude, same here. Yeah, like I, I plan on upgrading cars soon. I've only ever had two cars in my life. Like, and I, I, yeah, yeah, I try not to live above my means and things like that because that's just part of financial yeah. literacy. And there is this thing called sudden wealth syndrome, to your point, where, you know, these people become crypto millionaires. Like, imagine Hex in like two or three years. Like, a lot of us that aren't, that haven't already become millionaires from Hex, like, you know, your 20 extra bag or your 30 extra bag from where you're at now. 
And it's like, holy shit, yeah, like that puts me into millions or that puts me into X of number. Um, fortunately, my parents, you know, me having three other brothers and, you know, my parents, uh, they, they did real estate for 25 years, but they taught me like the, uh, the importance of not living above your means and having financial literacy. So for, yeah, so for me, it, you know, when I treat myself in the future, not this next car, like this next car, I want to just get like a Toyota Corolla, a Camry, something that's efficient and that's like, you know, not going to break down. But but then the, the upgrade from that after that, like, you know, a few years later is going to be a Tesla. Like, you know, fuck this yeah. showboat BS where it's like, it's almost like, I don't know, not to be like too graphic, but it's almost like people that, that you know, they got such a big ego or such a low perception of themselves that they need to like low self-esteem. Yeah, they need to overcompensate in, in some area, like, yeah, the Lambo or this or that. And then other people just use it as like a social signal and whatnot. But um, yeah. it's important to... to like wearing gold chains around them. their neck and shit. Gold, gold. I, know, hey. I mean, come on, right. man. <laughs> no, some, somebody, some said it, in, somebody in the chat said that they wanted you to hold that up a, a couple of times because oh. they hadn't seen it before. Was that one that you made yeah, on a 3D so. printer? So here's the thing. I didn't, but someone else did. So there's a website okay. that you can go to. I uh, just yeah, shapeways.com. Shapeways. Yeah, yeah, that's where I got it. Yeah. yeah, I've I've used Shapeways for one of my own projects because I, I was at a point in time when I was designing some products for myself. And then I thought, well, I could actually go out there and invest in a 3D printer of my own, or I can just mm -hmm. do, you know, 3D printing was designed for rapid prototyping. So mm -hmm. that, yeah. that's what the whole idea was for rapid prototyping. And when I first looked at my design, I thought, well, maybe I could just get it 3D printed. And so I talked to some of my friends and I had this one friend down in Germany. He goes, yeah, he goes, I could 3D print it for you. But he goes, just go to Shapeways and send them your STL file and you'll be able to print it like that. And I said, OK, cool. So what was really nice about that is um, I was able to not just send it to them, but they were really good about taking my file and refining it and making it just mm. that much better. Like because they've got plenty of uh, really nice uh, designers and, you know, people that are developers and stuff that know how to use the 3D printing technology that they have access to. And these machines are much more, uh, what's the word for it? High quality, really good totally. uh, resolution. So I basically got that and I, and I said, well, what can I have this printed in? And they go, you can have it printed in plastic, ABS, uh, metal, <laughs> you know, rubber. You can have it printed in anything you want. I said, oh, this is a godsend, you know, because you have access to all of these different materials and all of these different professional people and professional machines. So I thought I'm not going to invest in my own machine because it's just more of a pain in the ass than it's worth. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, you bring up a really good point, and I think anyone that's listening to this can can use this analogy in, in any other aspect of life. But, you know, what you're talking about is, is you know, similar to like the the, the overhead, right? Like that company, yeah. Shapeways, that's, that's using the 3D printer, you know, back in the day, it was just CNC, like just use a CNC machine. But but even still, yeah. uh, it's always it's always for, you know, to your point, prototypes and things like this. It's always going to be. Um, if if you if you have someone that's got the top top of the line technology, then that's going to be better than your you know shitty three hundred dollar like oh this can only be yeah. plastic three D printer you know so it's like three D printer <laughs> yeah like like at the end of the day it comes down to like what is the goal you're trying to achieve you know are you are you um, becoming your own manufacturer and you need to like mass do a whole bunch of these or do you just need the prototype and you need it to be fine and granular and uh, precise. So I guess it really just depends on what you're doing, how much you want to spend going into it. And um, I mean, you know, you can you can get something like this for a lot less than the cost of, of buying the machine and doing it yourself. Yeah, yeah. And you know what, too, is that was one of the kind of disappointing things about 3D printing in the 3D printing world is after probably only two years of watching that kind of whole uh, genre develop, uh, mm -hmm. I noticed that what was happening is the major portion of products that was being made on home homemade or home use uh, 3D printers was a bunch of crappy toys and shit. You know, people are like yeah. making little figurines and stuff. It's like, 
okay, well, yeah. this has just gone down the toilet. So I'm going to continue to use the professionals uh, because, you know, they have the best equipment. They just really do. Totally. So whether you want something that has super high resolution printing or you just need something that's rough draft. It's like, oh, yeah, I just need it with this much resolution. Uh, I'm going to be using it for mold. I'm going to be painting something. I'm going to be refinishing it. They go, okay, well, you, you just need to use some ABS. And it's a no brainer. So, and that's a nice thing too about technology and, and the, the speed in which all of these different technologies is evolving. And like, I can remember there was a point in time when I wanted to go and build my own website and I looked and I talked to a developer here in Denmark and he goes, oh yeah, he goes, I, I said, I want to build a store and I want to sell things on my own store. And he goes, oh yeah, he goes, I can build that for you for 8,000 Danish crowns. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's like a thousand bucks or something, you know? And I said, you know, that's not going to work. And he goes, why not? And I said, well, because I want to be the admin. He goes, no, 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 you can't do that. He goes, I'm going to have to do all the admin work for you, which means uploading photos and changing things and redoing stuff. And I said, no, 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 this is not working. And literally within, I would say five or six months, I found Shopify and I'm like, oh shit, this is cool. Everything is drag and drop. And I don't have to know how to code and I can build my own websites. And so yeah, and, and I think that most yeah. people that are looking at things on the internet, they just don't understand the volume of stuff that's available to them at their fingertips. Mm -hmm. Whether you want to learn yes, how yeah. to do physics, you want to learn how to, you know, uh, you can learn any topic. You don't have to go to college these days. You really don't. You can learn everything oh, online. I mean, totally. And it's similar to like, you know, the point that you make about the 3D printer and and just using those services that we now have is, yeah. um, you know, that was kind of the, the point that I was trying to make about Staker app because there there is more of a an expensive fee than, than just doing all of it yourself, but also doing it all of yourself, doing all of it yourself, it requires information and knowledge and making sure that you're not sending to the goddamn contract address instead of, you know, minting it yourself or staking it yourself. There's so many more things that you can fuck up on that you need that granular information and attention. So if you don't have, you know, that time to do the attention to detail and, you know, you're, you're not afraid, like you don't want to be afraid of like accidentally sending a thousand dollars to the contract address like I did on day one, then things like, um, you know, Staker app and things like that can, even though they're a little bit more expensive, if you're just onboarding someone and you're onboarding someone that's new and they, they understand the concept of a, you know, saving for their future, a staking ladders, things like this, then um, I think it just streamlines the process. So, so yeah, you know, someone like yourself, myself, and things like this, we've already had the knowledge, the information on how to use MetaMask, how to use the, the crypto onboards that we use. But um, it's cool that that exists everywhere else too. Yeah. So in your opinion, though, with, with regards to the Staker app, though, that mm -hmm. is that working on top of the hex platform or in conjunction with it i mean what what is that how is that intertwined with the hex uh, platform itself because what i'm trying to understand is are the developers that are working on hex some of the developers that were working on staker and i mean how how are how is that interaction happening so i don't have all the answers as, as far as okay goes. what i do know it's what i do really know right. is well, here's the thing that I do know, at least, is the actual the actual address. Like when you're setting up stakes on on uh, Staker.app, or if you go to yeah. allmylinks.com, you can get the same thing um, slash Valley at Brand. But what what you're actually setting up is a new wallet. It's it's not a MetaMask wallet. It's um it's called a NoSu Safe wallet, and it uses instead of MetaMask.io, which uses like a 12 word seed phrase, this uses a 24 word seed phrase. So it's a completely different wallet. And when you're setting it up. The part that I do know is yes, it's directly interacting with the uh, the hex smart contract address, and similar okay. to using like go.hex.com slash stake. There, um, there is no middleman. The only thing that like the staker.app does is it it just streamlines the process. So they purchase these wallets in in large quantities. They purchase um, even gas. Uh, to, to my knowledge, the gas too. They pre-purchase the Ethereum gas to you know try and make fees more efficient for you know, larger buys and, and things like this. So um, they okay. they do take a small, small, small cut just just for the cost of do, uh, for the cost of being able to maintain their business and maintain the smart contract wallet that you set up 
initially because it costs them money. It costs them like, I think it's like $10 for each individual wallet, but they're offering it uh, as a baseline for free. Like they're allowing you to just yeah. do it for free, but then you would onboard separately, you know, into Fiat on the application. So it doesn't so be the code I have stuff. So what I would like to do in the next couple of days is go ahead and set up a stake on the regular on the regular uh, hex stake uh, uh, platform and then set one up on staker and set yeah. them for the same amount of money and set them for the same amount of time and just see what happens, see what the result is. Because then I could just That's go, okay, <laughs> in six months, I'll, I'll end these stakes and uh, see what see what. See who wins. <laughs> totally, and and I actually do. I do got to get going, not to like uh, jump off. Okay, that's roughly, cool. But I, I do got to get going. Um, but, well, guess but, what? I mean, We've ran for two hours and twenty minutes. I think an hour and twenty minutes of that was just you and me. <laughs> cool, man. I'm I'm happy to hear. I uh, I yeah. love um, you know streaming and things like this. Like at the end of the day, it's all out of the the passion itself. Like you know, like I mentioned. Uh, concluding, yeah. you know, in, in 2017, you know, Litecoin, Ethereum, things like this, even Bitcoin, none of that inspired me to like put my face in front of a camera and even dox myself, you know, like I was under an alias, Brian Jones, the whole fucking time, who was an old coworker. <laughs> so it's like, you know, to, to be actually, you know, to your point, like, you know, show your face and, and be legit and authentic, do what you said you were going to do is kind of Brian like Jones. the inherent values. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It sounds like a folk singer. Later. Today yeah, we're yeah, or even, <laughs> seriously, or like, you know, I got one that was my, you know, cause, cause I've already shown these at uh, these accounts, but you know, Steve Johnson was a neighbor I had. And so I was like, ah, oh, let's just do this. You know, something that's memorable. So I'm not forgetting this like alias that I was hiding behind, but anyways, um, Hex is great. It's uh, it's got a community that, you know, the product itself is done. It, it's audited. It's done. There's, there's no, future expectations of work because hex is not a security you know it's it doesn't they don't promise anything but you know there's other people in the community you know there happens to be advertisements in the uk and london taxi cabs and um you know i've even seen a whole bunch of stickers in seattle that someone must have put there and same thing with chicago that someone must have put in their area as a hexagon and so uh we yeah. really have a grassroots adoption um but but i i gotta get going all uh I'd love to do okay. another stream with you sometime when I'm maybe at my house and I've yeah. got more of like a controlled environment of like how much time we can stream for. Cause, cause I really enjoyed this talk and I, I really like listening to your streams. Oh, thanks a lot. I appreciate you coming on too. Oh, one thing I was going to ask you before you go is one thing, uh, when, when I was looking at the page and the referral link is basically gone now, right? As far as referring people from the actual referral page. Isn't that like yes. lockdown? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that was the 351 day launch phase, which Hex had with the yeah. similar to EOS. Um, EOS, I don't think had a referral, but but yeah. So that was baked into the contract. Was baked into go to hex.com. But now the referral is done via Staker app, and you get like a 20% referral oh, as well. Cool. And uh, yeah, so there there is a referral. That's why I'm shilling like all my links. Shilling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and a lot of other hexagons are, are doing the same thing. Like there's a QR code that you can scan or just a URL that you can put in. And, you know, okay. if, you're, if you're onboarding someone already and you want to streamline the process and you want it to take five minutes as opposed to, you know, three days or, you know, X amount of days or X amount of hours, then, you know, you can not only get a small referral, like a 20% referral, but, um, but you can also help that person get introduced to Staker app, which does everything in one go. So, um, I gotta get going though, but All right. let's uh, let's let's chit chat. What, what's the what's the best way to contact you for for setting up a stream? Uh, my my well, yeah, you can just DM me on Facebook. Okay. I mean, I I, I use Facebook. Facebook. Okay. I check into Facebook messages all the time. Perfect. Okay, I'll uh, I'll look for you on Facebook. I'll I'll, uh, I'll get you there, and we'll uh, we'll chit chat later, man. We'll uh, we'll set up a stream sometime, and I look forward to it again. Okay, take it easy. <laughs>